Well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Rough Sketch to Final Draft. I am your host, Coach Adam, and we are now embarking upon our fourth episode, continuing on our journey of mindset and diving deep in today into the idea about what is a healing mindset and a mindset of healing. As many things as a life coach and as a personal trainer out there in the world when you're actually motivating individuals that really does come up in the truest sense about managing goals and potential outcomes, achievements that the client wants to, of course, experience for themselves. And in many ways, they are also coming to you looking for the opportunity and the actual acceptance for the permission to be able to achieve those goals. In my line of work with life coaching and coaching others through relationships, traumatic experiences, um, needing a reset in their mindset towards some sort of understanding to where they are now challenged for the first time in a very long time in their lives, maybe after everything that had happened, even with what's happened in the past couple of years. Shook a lot of us out of the comfort zones that we've all been underneath for a very long time. The ideas about what we thought we were and what life was, safety, security, and things like that, all got flipped upside down and certainly got challenged in a real way. So in the truest sense, to understand that really a mindset of healing and a healing mindset are things that are going to be incredibly important for individuals to contemplate in their lives. Nothing is ever really battened down for sure. Nothing is absolute. We all want structure and stability, things that will never move. The truth of it is, is that the trees that actually move with the wind and bend are going to be the ones that live the longest, like bam bamboo, right? In that truest uh, analogy from ancient Japanese wisdom tales and so on and so forth about the fact that the trees that bend with the wind and the storms that come and go, those are the ones that actually will outlast all the other deep-rooted trees, even the great pines, to even the big coconut trees, and so on and so forth. Bamboo outlasts it all. So it really is the idea about actually shaping ourselves into who we want to be. One, at the same time, it's also a process of learning what maybe we thought we wanted to be may not turn out to be what we really wanted. And that's true in the sense that sometimes life doesn't give us what we want because we actually do deserve things that are better. That's truer now than at any other point in time in history, I believe. In the modern world, we have a lot of desires and dreams and goals that are set before us. And a great deal of these are implemented and thrust upon us by society, by a measure in which comes through the culture. And never negative in that regard or not. It's just a simple truth to be able to be able to point these things out, calling the kettle black, judging a red Ferrari by the fact that it's a red Ferrari is legitimately just calling out the fact that it is just that, a red Ferrari. So understanding that some of these things do come from the culture and that they actually really aren't necessarily 100% the healthiest for our being to actually attain or go after. We want to make sure that we're being kind and loving to ourselves and really actually making sure that what we're seeking is going to be good for us in the long run. So a huge part of managing our mindset towards a healthy mindset is going to be about the idea of changing ourselves first. When we realize that we want to have change in our lives, we keep on saying, you know, I want my job to change. I want my relationship to change. I want my money situation to change. I want my energy situation to change, my health situation to change. All the while, we know that in the back of all of this, the truth of it is, is that the time that it actually will begin to change, miraculously, is that when we actually take the reins and change ourselves, take control of our lives, and actually genuinely jump in and start doing something about it taking the direct approach 
in our relationships, in the lives of our loved ones, in the relationships and the positions that we hold in our professional lives and careers. That hobby that we've ever wanted to dive into and make more time for isn't going to manifest on its own. It's going to have to be bought with the paints and the pencils and the canvases and the crochet yarn and so on and so forth, whatever it is. It's going to have to be when we actually make the change for ourselves. And then that's when life begins to manifest for us. And not until. Everything until actually will be a repeat. It's going to repeat the cycle until we learn. Just like when we were young and children in grade school, one of the reasons why they actually do make those desks so small is so that you can't fit in them when you're 25 anymore let alone when you're 30, because you've outgrown those lessons. Some of us are so stubborn, though. We want to stay stuck in that position of being able to be that unaccountable anymore. But life will continue to repeat the same way that we did with those lessons when we were younger. At the end of every single chapter, there's always a chapter review, making sure that whatever it is that you did learn and the lesson that was being taught is going to have a refresher course as a reminder Life operates in a similar capacity, that whatever you've gone through, and you healed, and you've gone through it, and you've overcome it, and that's no longer your affliction, your addiction, your area of growth. We're revisited by these things sometimes in life, and oftentimes when I'm actually in my coaching sessions, people are like, well, why are these things coming back? I've already learned this lesson. I don't want these types of opportunities more. I don't want these types of experiences anymore. I've cleaned out these types of people in my life. I've done the work. I've done the manifestations. I've done the breathing. I've done the healing. And these are all well and good. These are fantastic. Those are all the correct steps. It's simply that life is sending you a chapter review as a reminder. And if you keep continually passing these chapter reviews, the chapter will go on. Absolutely. And keep in mind always humbly that if they ever come again down the road, we're always tested on the entire book by the end of the semester. So there will never really come a point in time in life where you will ever be free from being reminded by those things from the past. And if you really have overcome them, well, you drive to the same stores every single day, you drive to the same job every day, you drive to the gym drive to a friend's house, drive to a loved one's home. The traffic is annoying, though it becomes something that you do understand. You understand how particular lights or intersections work. You know that when you're on the particular part in the freeway, you know which intersection and junction is going to end up being the one that's going to be easy to get by or the one that's going to take 35 to 45 minutes. So when these reminders come up, it really is just a tenacity about our internal integrity, about how we're able to handle that intensity at the moment that it's going to arise. And that's all right. What that does is harden the lesson. It strengthens us on the inner, on the inside. So where with the wherewithal and the actual internal integrity eventually becomes unbreakable in that regard. All right? And a big part about this Obviously, as we're doing an overview for many of these things that I would do a deep dive in any of the coaching sessions that I'd be a part of is that um, who you end up surrounding yourself with is a huge mirror reflection of where you are in your spiritual growth, your personal development, your life trajectory, whether or not you're in alignment with where you actually really want to go in your life or whether or not you are taking a back seat as a passenger on the Uber on the way to your dreams and hopes. And someone else is driving. You just wanted to punch in the destination. You wanted someone else to do the driving and all the hard work. Life doesn't really work that way. At the same time, we have certainly created a world in which we can do those types of things. The idea about being able to, quote unquote, fake it till you make it, um, to dress it up however you would like, wear the million dollar looking watch, get the expensive clothing, get the lifestyle to look like it should before all those things have actually really fallen into place or been achieved. These things in this world of today are easier now than ever to be able to capitulate and a little bit more on the manipulate uh, aspect of life for all those who are around to be able to get by without actually having to achieve 
those aspects of truth. And this is, of course, a step back from where we want to have our mindsets of health and a healthy mindset towards. A healthy mindset is somewhere that uh, you are honest and open, transparent, vulnerable about where you are. You can fool others in the truest sense to kind of wrap up this lesson. But when you fool yourself and you actually start believing your own lies, that's when anyone is actually spelling the telltale signs of disaster. And it's not late and it's not long after that this type of self confusion and self manipulation, bewilderment um, in that regard, will begin to take form and show itself in their life in a dramatic way. Life is nothing that can be faked. I mean, it, it, it literally will know what's going on and it will direct and guide your life in the capacity in which it needs to. And again, these are lessons that life is always bringing forward and using a chapter summary at the very end to remind us to see whether or not we've actually passed some of these hurdles in life. So when we're choosing those individuals in our life that are going to be mirrors for us, choose wisely. This is partners. This is partnerships. These are professional relationships. These are coworkers that we spend time with versus the idea of some coworkers that we just get a chance to know and communicatively get a chance to enjoy their presence at work, perhaps, but certainly don't invest any time into. These are genuine truths that we have to focus on to make sure that we're watching out for ourselves and our own growth. Safe space, nothing against anyone else. Wherever they are is where they are. But you really have to start taking an accountability. This is a checklist to do as an internal checklist. As we're doing a healthy mindset checklist, the first step is to analyze and view what are my influences. Who are those around me that are closest to me? Know the most intimate details about me. And where am I spending my energy and efforts? You might have dreams of creating something amazing for yourself. Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you have the idea of wanting to launch a clothing brand. Maybe you want to travel with people. These people that you're going to be ending your day with, where you share your dreams and hopes with, sometimes are going into an empty bucket. You want to make sure that you're sharing these ideas and these ideals and these dreams with individuals that are going to assist you to manifest these dreams with you, at least if nothing more than to give you a a bit of support morally, uh, energetically, emotionally, and root you on, where it tends to be sometimes when individuals who are in a group have a dream, they might find themselves surrounded by those who are naysayers that will take away their energy, put down the idea. And oftentimes when I'm coaching others, this is kind of where we find that their actual setbacks really genuinely are, as if they've made unhealthy choices for those individuals that they've chosen to surround themselves with. And it has negatively impacted their lives because now they feel like they aren't going after their dreams, they aren't feeling fulfilled in their careers. And when you really start peeling back the cover, you really start to understand what you've opened up is actually a truth about the individual lacking the skill set that was never taught to any of us, by the way. So safe space, none of us were ever taught this in grade school as we were growing up, and certainly not in high school, about how to with respect, look at other individuals and make an assessment of whether or not that's going to be a good idea for us to embark upon. We can see the best in everybody. At the same time, you still have to understand that there is a difference between a Ferrari and a motorbike, like a Vespa. These things are crucial about the ability to be aware and the honesty and the integrity and the courage that it takes to really genuinely understand these types of things. And sometimes it is our own internal insecurities, our fears that hold us back from being able to discern and make these actual genuine real life choices for ourselves. And isn't that interesting? That as full grown adults, 18 and up, we have these fears, these internal propensities that literally are rooted somewhere within our internal psychology that go all the way back to our childhood some experience when we were children that ended up uh, altering our course 
in the direction that we wanted to maybe go towards with whatever that what it was, but there was a reaction that ended up happening from a loved one, from a trusted uh, adult figure, some sort of an authority in our lives that we looked up to and we were made fun of, we were chastised. Something else tragically took place that ended up becoming a trauma that now becomes the reason why we're no longer confident in ourselves and our choices that we make. So this is always the next step in a coaching session that you actually end up diving into with any client about the choices that they've made in their adult life and then how those choices are actually affecting their lives in the present time. And then taking a deep dive look into their childhood and the types of choices that they made when they were younger. And whether or not those choices that they used to make and that they make now are in correlation with the idea of the results that they're either getting or they're still in waiting for. These things are powerful. They seem like basic concepts. So I think you're starting to get the gravitas of the idea of how deep these actual simple concepts and these simple ideas, seemingly simple on the surface, take a revolutionary effect within the minds of our lives as human beings throughout the course of our lives. So adding into the simple concept of simply saying a healthy mindset, when you really start to unpackage all these things and start to literally take them all apart, read line by line, page by page, you start to understand that this is a very complex, sensitive material. Some of these things are truly life-changing, life-threatening when you actually really get to the core of these things. Some of our fears and some of our thoughts go way deep into our lives, into our behavior. And it shapes who we are and who we become, which is, of course, why this whole entire episode is coming forth. I've had the opportunity now to have two amazing guests with uh, the amazing Lulu Lee and the amazing coach Dia. And I hope you get a chance to take a look at some of the other episodes. If you're either on podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, or if you're on Spotify, whichever one, we're now kind of growing. So I'm learning to keep track of all these things now that we're in episode number four um, as we're growing and going. And I appreciate you again. Again, I'll take a pause. If you're here, you found this channel and you found this message and you found this entire community for a reason. So please reach out to us on Instagram. Uh, find us on Spotify. Download the episodes, go to Apple Podcasts, give it a follow, go to the YouTube channel, uh, Rough Sketch of Final Draft, RS2FD, follow and comment there, follow along as we grow, and, and I'm welcoming every single one of you as, as we always do. This has just been an incredible journey to actually be able to share and talking about those episodes before with the conversations that I've had with these amazing women that have done incredible things in their lives. They're all about creating healthy mindsets after what we've been through. And all of us have been through something. All of us go through something. That's just the way that it is. And it's how we go through it and what we end up becoming on the other side of that that really is up to us. The wind blows on us all when we're out there on the sea. The difference of where we arrive in our lives is the set of our sail. And we get a chance to be the captain of our own ship. And again, many of us are taking that side seat. We are looking at the captain, even though it's right there in the mirror. We've allowed someone else to hold steady where we're supposed to go, sitting back in the back of the Uber of our lives and our dreams. And this is counterproductive to where we actually want to be as a healthy-minded individual achieving our dreams. So while we're looking at the fact of starting with who we surround ourselves with in a deeper dive into just how simple that idea can be incredibly and immensely complex, what we want to make sure is that we're choosing individuals in our lives, choosing them, not just allowing them to come into our lives also. Let's highlight that. Let's make a choice. Let's make a dedicated choice in our lives to choosing those individuals that are going to be in our lives. It doesn't happen by accident. Okay, so let's pause and take a step back right there, say space at the same time. Let's hold space for that regard and realize we need to actively actually engage in the practice of choosing those who are going to be in our lives. Because they do take a radical effect, obviously, by this conversation and this revelation. It's huge. The impact that they can have on us is lifelong, everlasting. And if going after your dreams is something that's important to you, 
finding those individuals, your tribe, that actually will help you strive towards achieving your dreams and your goals is everything. So talk about the impact that they have. So make sure that you're choosing, actively choosing the individuals you want to surround yourself with and do this respectfully, do this kindly and do this kindly and respectfully for yourself. Do that. Understand that that's an important thing that you have to do for yourself as an individual in this life. And on that point, let me take a step back and, and literally let's take 10 steps back and look at it from a standpoint of when we're going through our growth in our lives before we move on to this next topic is the idea that there's really three progressional steps in life that we go through as individuals. And what we're talking about right now is taking accountability. Okay, so how we unpack that as we're taking this 10 steps back view, we go through three stages. The first one is going to be discipline. When we're young, we are disciplined. Someone else is responsible. Someone else is accountable. Someone else is the mature adult. We're a child. We're in that stage. So discipline is put upon us. Somewhere through our teenage years, start to come into a self journey, self discovery. Some of us stay there for the rest of our lives, by the way. You'll see how this radically transforms for step number three. And where we stay at is in this self discovery and self this and self identity and self, self, self. We transitioned away from discipline. Didn't want that. We like someone else having the responsibility. We want to be on this journey about self. And within this journey, we start to realize that there's a lot of things that require discipline in that self journey. Lots to unpack there. Life is not a solo game. Even if you wanted to imagine that it was. Everything from the way the roads work to the food getting to even the store that you're going to go to to just buy it for yourself. It's not a solo game. If you're going to grow all the food and make all your shoes and sew all your clothes and build your home and build your car and dig the oil and put the gas in your car, great. Great on you. That's phenomenal. I can also humbly say there was probably directions and manuals that someone else did make that you didn't design that you're going to follow in that process. So again. There's a humbling process about the fact of the self journey is going to immediately bring into your life the fact of the necessity of others. And this is a beautiful part of our journey that we understand that we're all in this together. This is one of the reasons why just be kind to others. We're all going through struggles that no one else knows about. We're all struggling the same struggle. We may not be struggling the same way. That's the difference between our mindsets and our gradations of our internal, personal evolutions. Hence, that's the reason why we're having this conversation about healthy mindsets and mindsets of health. So in your self-journey, the next stage that ends up becoming there, as you're starting to realize responsibilities are tough, bills, jobs, clothing, you got to feed yourself. You can't just be relying on anybody else, you have to end up becoming self-reliant. The thing that ends up happening is you go from being disciplined to your self-journey to eventually, at long last, self-discipline. And within self-discipline is now where you're going to be responsible for your own life. This is the key area to finally get to. This is the final form of evolution in that regard. It's the gradation. It's the level up. The self journey is phenomenal. It's incredible. You could spend the rest of your life and three more lifetimes doing it. Many people stay right there. Some actually take a step back, even in their adult life, and go right back to the idea of wanting to be disciplined and having someone else be responsible and leaving that there and never actually growing into accountability. These are just journeys. Safe space for anyone wherever they're at, wherever they find themselves, however that is. These are just stating the facts. The red Corvette is red. So in that sense, the going towards self-discipline is going to be the main goal. Having the ability to finally actually genuinely be accountable for ourselves, our actions and our choices and our words and our lives, and where they end up going, self-discipline is where we get there. That's the actual putting yourself in the driver's seat. That's being the boss. So many different phrases, so many fun things that we all say out there right now. 
taking charge and everyone's a boss, everyone's a king, everyone's a queen. We are. When you're finally self-disciplined, when you're finally leveling up to actually fully be accountable for your actions and not just always obfuscating and deflecting and projecting off onto others that they're the way that they are and that makes it okay for the way in which we react. So, you know, how others act towards us does not ever justify the way that we react. That's on us. That's always on the individual. How we choose to react is how we choose to hold ourselves, compose ourselves, how we put ourselves together. That's on us. And of course, that's obviously the fair thing to say, because if we're going to hold those others accountable for their actions in the first place, the only reason why we can hold them accountable for their actions is because they must be responsible for their actions. So if we have an action, regardless whether or not it's a reaction or an action, we have to, out of fairness, hold ourselves accountable as well. Okay, so those are inverted and those are obviously a dialectic in that regard. So while we're choosing the individuals in our lives, taking a step forward now and making sure that we make good choices with those people, surround ourselves with healthy minded individuals. If you want, touch back on the conversation that I had with Coach Dia and also Lulu Lee about this. Who we choose to spend our lives with shapes our lives in a dramatic way. And the reason why that's going to matter is because it's going to be the next big point is the individuals that we end up sharing our lives with in friendships, love relationships, genuine business partnerships, colleagues, and so on and so forth. These are the individuals that we're going to be matching our energy with. That's right. The individuals that we literally share our life experiences with, that's our energy. We never get the time of our lives back. And the time that we spend is equated to energy that we have our youth, our vitality. If you can recall right now memories that you have made with individuals when you were young, summers lasted forever. You never get those nights back. Hopefully, the nights that you spent were spent with people that you'll remember and cherish those memories forever. Because those are the choices that were made with the time that you were given. This is powerful. And they leave long-lasting effects on us. I can only say as a coach how many times life experiences from the past end up trickling into conversations that live in our conversations today and shape our perceptions and our objections to certain things in this life. And 90% of a coaching call in a coaching client session for two to three hours is going to be about literally peeling back those relationships and understanding the depth of these relationships that have caused these beliefs that are either limiting or uplifting. So make careful choices with these things. Make sure that who you are spending your life with, someone that you can actually genuinely count on, they can count on you. In the self-discipline category, understand that that's going to be an imperative part about this entire journey of life. Remember, go from discipline to self-discovery to eventually self-discipline. Okay? And that goes back to the conversation that I've had on this channel before about the fact of the three stages that we really do go through. It's just human beings. Carl Jung, um, Fortean Psychology will all confirm the fact that there's three main developments of human beings, and really the way that I've summarized and broken it down is the fact that you become, when you're first born, dependent upon those around you. You go through your independent phase through your teenager years and rebellious times. And again, most individuals stay between these two and ping pong throughout their entire lives, whether or not they're six to 60, it doesn't matter. And again, holding space for anyone who's at it, whatever level of um, development and evolution that they might find themselves in. It's just the truth, right? We're just getting a chance to call the kettle black when it is. And the third stage is when you become someone that is dependable. So you start your journey as completely dependent upon others. Then you fight for your independence. And so many people stay here. So many stay in that independent phase fighting for them, fighting for their peace of mind, fighting for whatever that is. And that's fantastic. This is that self stage. Self-discovery. See how they line up? 
And the third one is the self-discipline portion of this that ties into the you can depend on me. So all of these things matter. Someone that you can count on is going to be important in your life because you also want to become someone who others can count on. Okay? So in the journey of making these decisions, you're going to realize that the biggest part about all of this is that life doesn't always give us exactly what we need in our process. Okay? It gives us what we deserve. So if you're working for your personal growth on your journey, then life's opportunities are going to start to take manifestation and fruition in that regard. It's not just going to give it to you because you need it. You have to work for it. You have to put in the effort for it. The opportunities will start to manifest when you put yourself in those conversations, in those situations. If you're wanting to achieve your dreams, as we're tying this all in together, finding those circles of individuals that are doing what you want to be doing, living the life the way you want to live your life, finding a way to get involved in those circles, finding those connections is going to be paramount in being able to make those things actually take care of the processes that are going to get you there. You can't just keep hanging out with the individuals that you always have been, getting the same results here, or there, and otherwise, and then just hoping by some sort of magical moment, maybe the media has done a terrible job of making that seem like that was the, the way that that steps go, and you wave a magic wand, and then it happens. You have to literally start putting yourself into those situations, reading books on it actually taking the time to really study that type of lifestyle, seeing what those individuals read, what they study, what they think, what they do, the perceptions that they have. That's the kind of world that you end up becoming. Because of this whole entire process of a healthy mindset, remember, as we're growing as individuals, what we're looking for is reminding ourselves throughout this process of growth and self-discovery who we're becoming. That's one of the healthiest portions to keep in mind always about this journey of the self. Keeping in mind who we're becoming. So taking a step back and even just having that as a revelation for you in the sense that thinking about your goals, think about it from this stage. Right? As we're taking a step back, you want to become a millionaire. You want to have that particular type of job. You want to own your own business. You want to start a singing career. You want to launch a clothing brand. You want to start a supplement company. You, whatever it is that you have as your dreams and your goals. Think about the type of person that you'd become by going after that. If you become a millionaire, what kind of person do you become when you become that millionaire? It's going to make a defining difference in the truest sense. Because when you actually become that, when you've established that, and we're just talking about the economics of it, the actual money, if the fundamental principles of the person behind the money has not fundamentally changed, how long do we really think that that money is going to stay in the hands of the individual that still carries around with them a poor mindset? A mindset that is not about wealth and wealth creation and understands accounting and the books and the numbers, but individuals highly, potentially, volatilely going to lose that money very quickly. As they say, a fool and his money are quickly separated, are they not? So in the truest sense, in the journey of us going towards our dreams and choosing the people in our lives that we're going to actually surround ourselves with, it's imperative that we find individuals that are going to match the growth patterns that we're looking for in the journey of us becoming the type of person that we really want to be. Even more so as we stay on this point before we move forward. 
the type of person that we really want to become is actually the dream of our actual goal in the first place. The reason why we want the money, the reason why we want to open up that company, the reason why we want to have that type of relationship, travel the world, so on and so forth, it is obviously facilitating some sort of a deep desire within us. We want to become a millionaire type of person. By opening up my own business, I want to feel fulfilled as that type of person that can achieve those types of things. You see how imperable, just important that, that is. The imperativeness of that is absolutely paramount. It's already there within the actual truth of our goals. We want to become a, a particular person inside. We're, we're looking to fill something inside of ourselves that is yet to be filled. There's nothing broken. The fact is, is that we're a progress. We're, we're a work in progress throughout the course of our lives, which is never done, by the way. So enjoy the journey. And just understand humbly some of these core principles that I'm sharing with you in today's episode. This is all about core principles of, of a healthy healing mindset. That throughout this entire process of the journey, we really are fulfilling certain parts of ourselves that's making us think that we want to go after X, Y, or Z dream in the first place. In the first place. So when we achieve these dreams and as we're going towards achieving them, it's easy to sometimes get lost in the fog of the dream and going after that amazing dream if we can only get it. The point is, though, is who we become along that path. It's powerful stuff. I'm reminded about a story of an individual that, um, this is actually a, a true story. Um, someone close to me in my life uh, about seven years ago passed away. Um, this was an elderly gentleman, a huge mentor in my life, and meant a lot to me. And they had a grandchild. Their actual son had passed away, but the grandchild was still around. And the grandfather had left a note uh, with the lawyers to be able to go into the fact of his inheritance, right? So he shows up one day and gets a chance to have the conversation with the lawyers. And he's sent to another country, um, goes on a couple different journeys, according to the actual descriptions that were laid out by uh, this wonderful man, his grandfather. and. Five years later, when the individual came back, the grandson came back to the lawyer's office, having done everything that was on this piece of paper, um, saying, I'm ready to claim my inheritance. He had traveled the world. He had been backpacking through India. He had trekked through parts of Siberia. He had been to beautiful areas in China and seen the Great Wall. Um, he had trekked through the areas of Peru all the way to Machu Picchu and seeing the ancient ruins there. And the lawyers got a chance to say back to him that the experiences that he actually went on, that's what his grandfather wanted for him in the first place. So it's interesting in life to think about the fact of the journey of who we're becoming, right? The inheritance that we're actually really genuinely even giving to ourselves. Not just waiting for someone else to bestow upon us. Again, either your backseat in the Uber of your life, or whether or not you are at the helm of your ship, sailing across the seas to whatever destination you so fit and choose for yourself. It's your choice. It genuinely is. It's our choice for us all. And if we end up finding the value and the pains and struggles that we end up going through, it radically revolutionizes our entire life experiences. One of the best conversations that I've ever had in my entire life with anybody is the conversation that I had with Coach Dia in last week's episode. So if you're looking for a fantastic view of a new way to see perceptions about your life and the pain that we all go through, then I certainly invite you to take a look and go back to that episode and re-listen to it a few times. There are some genuine nuggets of absolute gold there. 
And as we move forward in this particular episode with some of the key principles of a healthy mindset, I'm going to leave you with this last portion being the could, would, or should of your life. And I'm going to start that off with in the sense that I know that we all think that we have reasons in our lives right now. We all have reasons that we do certain things the way we do them. We have causes that have hurt us. We have uh, relationships that have failed uh, and that we've actually failed relationships. And maybe we're not dealing with that or maybe we are. Wherever you are with that, I send you light and love. And we're holding a safe space here. It's perfectly fine. We're just looking at the facts. We're just looking at the truth. In order to be able to move forward, we have to be, become honest, accountable, and truthful about them. Just like I said at the beginning of this episode. And I know that we all think that we have these reasons. My childhood was this way. My childhood was in that way. My life is this way. My career is that way. My finances are here. My finances are there. Not really where I want to be in life. All these reasons for the way that we are today and in every day in every way. What I'm going to humbly ask you to do is to have an open mind and take a look at the fact of whether or not the reasons that you have are not actually reasons enough to go after what you're going after in your life. So you have reasons that you are the way you are. The way that we are is based on these reasons. That we want our goals to be achieved, and that's over here. If we had enough reasons to go after our goals, we would go after them. Nothing would be able to hold us back. As the old saying goes, uh, wild horses couldn't pull you away from what you really want in life. Determination and discipline is powerful stuff. So when you actually understand that your real reasons of why you're doing what you're doing need to be amplified, even when we're talking about going after our dreams, which is where a lot of us feel like we're unfulfilled. Hence the reason why we're all talking about this. These core principles, just to kind of bring it back in together and have you understand where we're at, is the truth that not feeling fulfilled makes us actually literally not have a healthy mindset. We start feeling like we're a failure and we've somehow lost it. So all these principles congeal and coalesce together to make this lesson really lock in. So when we're going after our goals, what are our reasons for going after them? Many times, single parents, I was raised by amazing single father, single mothers are out there in the world. They're absolutely incredible, absolutely amazing. As soon as we have children, this is my point, we have all the reasons in the world to end up jumping to light speed to achieve our dreams. Many times whenever I'm coaching a client, even if it's a single mother, single father, even at the gym, and they have their child in child care before they're off to work. I mean, we're up at four o'clock in the morning at the gym. And they put their child in the child care center and we're there doing an hour and a half workout and then they're off to work right afterwards. Some of these are very high, high end individuals, lawyers and doctors and nurses and ER nurses and so on and so forth. Phenomenal individuals who've got it all together, got their life together. They share with me why they actually ended up starting what they did. They said that when they had their child look at them with those eyes of trust, it changed everything for them that day. There was never anything that they were not going to be able to capable of doing anymore. They weren't going to let their fears of their past, any of their doubts, any of their insecurities get to them. They were going to overcome it. They would become the parent that they knew that they wanted to be for this little bundle of joy. And it made them jump to light speed to where they achieve the rest of their dreams. Some of them actually had their child when they were still finishing school and they didn't stop, they kept on going. It became the reason to keep going. See, our reasons when they're powerful enough literally can be the fuel for the fire that ends up becoming the reason why we succeed. And it's really a choice. Don't forget, every single day we wake up with two things, right? We have a chance and we have a choice. And depending on what we end up doing with our chances and our choices that we have every single day, so no matter where you're at also in your journey, taking 10 steps back to be loving here, wherever we are 
in that whole entire aspect of life and experiences, wherever you've been tomorrow, by the time of listening to this, maybe that's why you found this podcast. Maybe that's why you found this community of rough sketch, the final draft where life is all about the idea of it's a rough sketch. Life is working towards the final draft. We won't even get a chance to publish our final copy until we're gone. Someone else will publish it in our autobiography, in some bibliography down the road. How we'll be remembered? Hopefully, it'll be the way we hope. But that's up to those who end up inheriting whatever it is that we've actually done for them and done with them in our lives journey that would incentivize them to speak well of us while we're here with them during that time. We can't demand that people speak well of us after we're gone. We had to have earned that. The same way that we wish to speak well of anyone that's passed. These individuals earned our love. We must do the same. And these are reasons, right? These are all back to that reason that we're doing what we're doing. This fuels the fire for what we're doing in our lives. And whatever our life skills are, life skills learned well never go away. They never do. So while we're looking and analyzing for the individuals who are going to be in our lives, making the proper assessments for those who are going to share our energy with, as we're making sure that our reasons line up with where our lives are going to go, we break it down into the should, woulds, and coulds. And this is where we're going to wrap up today's episode's message. Should, would, and could. These are principles of thought. Today's entire episode is all about the fundamental principles of keeping a healthy mindset, the mindset of health. The coulds in our lives are something that we analyze, right? We weigh out this in a logical format. The could, we do that. Sure, but I could go do this. See, it's a logical, emotional appeal. So the could is emotion-based. It's always going to be affected by some sort of emotional component. So if you find inside your language that you use could often, realize the synonym and the etymology of the understanding of it is really making an emotional appeal from a psychological standpoint. Because you could do this, but you could do something else. See, when it's put into a parameter like that inside the brain, the mind does an interesting thing. That if it's easy to do, then guess what? It's easy not to do. And that's where we end up usually falling short of ending our day, doing the things that we thought that we were going to, which immediately adds more into the feeling that we didn't do it, we're not good enough, somehow you're not making progress in life, the unfulfillment starts to creep back in and again and again and again the reassurance of the insecurities keep reinforcing themselves in a negative recurrence of the cycle so careful what words we use that's why i bring up the should wouldn't and coulds and these things are I go into much more in any coaching session that i ever go in with anybody these are the icings on the cake there are eight layer cakes here the next one is the wood. And the wood is a little bit more of a, a logical appeal. Could is more on the emotional side. It can be easily passed off. I could eat right now, and I could go for a burger. I could go for a taco. I could go for fill in the blank. It's all emotional based. It's a feeling. I could. The wood, it's very simple. It gives it away with the lettering. It's a willpower thing. It's a mental conjecture of the idea of simplifying the desire in some sort of manifestation of our minds that i would do that but then what would i do with my time over here it's a it's a will thing so we actually look into the willpower the drive that we have that keeps us going whenever we're thinking about our reasons and whether or not they're powerful enough in life in general that's the whole entire thing where this comes down to. So with wood, you're talking about a 
logical, rational deduction that's taking place inside the mind that may or may not have your best interest at heart, especially depending on how strong one's willpower truly is. So if you are stuck in a position where you're using wood, think about the logic of the language from a new perspective, that you're understanding that it's a willpower thing. And if you would like to increase your willpower, there's plenty of ways to do that through motivation, inspiration, so on and so forth, dedication, discipline. There's books on all these things, okay? And again, stay tuned for more episodes on the podcast. Take back into the episodes from before with the amazing Coach Dia and Lulu Lee. There's plenty of inspiration and many coaches who work on the idea of literally getting you motivated through the willpower of things. Just understanding the power of these words is where I want us to focus on for today's episode because it's all about the healthy mindset. Understanding what could and would literally do do to our human psychology, either they help us or they hurt us. The word would is just a substitution for a willful feeling. There's a lack of motivation towards it. I would do that if. I would do that X, Y, Z. Okay? So let's keep a track on that. And the last one, my favorite one, is should. Could, would, and should. Should is the most damaging and the most detrimental in the truest sense in, in any shape or form. And the joke is, is that no one should ever should on themselves. Because it shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? If could would have been the emotional response, would was the willpower, then should was certainly only ever dealt with in the after effect. Even while we're saying it, I should go do my homework. You see, understanding in, in the etymology of the actual linguistics of that, I should go do my homework. It's already been decided that you're not going to. It's as if you were literally hanging on the edge of a cliff and you're not going to move forward. The decision's already been decided with inside your actual psychology of your mind. You're actually speaking about it from a stance of, I'm not gonna. That's already past tense. I should go do it. But you're not going to. Even if you convince yourself on this side. So any of you that are like, well, I use that word, but I still get it done. It's literally speaking about it, though, in a psychological parameters from the standpoint of not gonna, wasn't going to, not going to, and I feel like I probably don't want to also. Should comes after could, would, and should. Should is the, the last vanguard. It's the defense wall outside the castle keep. And if you're already at the should terminology inside your psychology, then it's revealing to you that it's the last thing on your list that you even want to do, even though it might be the first thing on the list that needs to get done inside the mind. It's already been put into a categorical placement that is, I don't want it, and I'm not going to, okay? Should, would, and could, and never should on yourself. So... All of these skills and all of these principles for today for a healthy mindset are going to be things that I would like to obviously plant the seeds for now. They're a culmination of many of the skills and practices that I go over in depth with any of the clients that I meet and get a chance to assist in their shaping of their lives. And of course, for the benefit of anyone listening, these are all tools to shape the mindset that we actually carry within ourselves. It's the biggest thing. Mindset matters. It really, truly does more than almost anything else. Everything that you've ever done in your life or ever even heard about is all from someone's mindset. Anything that you've ever attempted in your life started as an idea somewhere first, and then you acted on it. Mindset is crucial. And I hope that some of these principles that I've shared with today on this episode of Rough Sketch of Final Draft have been something that you can take home, chew on, some nuggets of truth for you to be able to digest over and over again. Perhaps some of them you might want to listen to again, just to make sure that you heard them right, and maybe you listen to it a third time, and you'll hear something new in a different way. It's often the experience that I've had as well, being someone who is now a podcaster. I'm also an avid podcast listener and reader of other works and audiobooks, and sometimes when you hear it a third, fourth, fifth time, it changes the meaning, and there's new things there that were always there. So now they stand out to you in a new way. 
So I just want to invite you all to getting a chance to take a look at some of the other episodes. Stay tuned for more and just know that I'm grateful for you being here. And again, if you are here, it's not by accident. The universe doesn't work in accidents or coincidences. So for as long as you will be here with us, I'm grateful for it. I look forward to getting a chance to read comments of yours down below. Please like this uh, audio and subscribe if you haven't already on the YouTube channel. If you're hearing this on the podcast um, portion of it from Apple Podcasts or Spotify, look us up on YouTube. It would really help us out. We're growing. We're new. There will be merch. Um, the shirt that I'm wearing right now, which is a rough sketch of final draft. Everyone's been requesting it in my messages on Instagram. Please find me there at Coach Adam. I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.